Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. So what do you get when you have 30 million people unemployed, right? What do you get? Let's quick, let's quickly do the math. One plus six equals 92. You have the S&P 500 at a 10 month high. Uh, guys, amazing, absolutely amazing. Everybody, welcome to another edition of uh, the AxesTrader.com nightly wrap up show. Hope everybody uh, had a good day of trading. If you look at the numbers today, pretty, pretty staggering, right? Uh, it's not that that the market was up, the Dow was up 900 points, uh, a little less than 4%. Uh, the S&P was up a little bit 3%. And the Nasdaq, the most ironic part of all of, of all this, uh, it was actually lagging. When I say lagging, I'm being very, very sarcastic, uh, with a little less than 2.5%. But if, if, you, if you break down what the market did today, kind of how it closed on Friday, you really kind of saw this coming, not in a way that we could possibly see a 900 point rally. But if you look what happened last week, and we talked about this uh, on the weekend update, you, you really liked what you saw from the bulls. Again, we talked about this last night uh, on the video, bulls reclaimed the five day moving average. And now we just needed to see what can confirm. The problem was, unless you were long overnight, okay, that conf confirmation was literally three dollars higher four dollars high if you notice exactly where it stopped again right is it where it got rejected uh several days ago so we'll get to that uh in a second but again the themes today were pretty obvious okay you had uh fed continuing talking about further stimulus as i'm getting a weird uh weird alert um you talked about the fed talking about more stimulus okay you had mrna uh, coming out with a promising phase one trial, yada, 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 exploded again, giving optimism uh, that some sort of vaccine could be on the table, hopefully sooner than later. Um, and then you started hearing more and more states, more and more counties uh, starting to open up. And the most amazing part with this type of market, with this type of mental sentiment, okay, you don't need a lot to spark a rally. And not only did we spark a rally, we sparked a hell of a rally. And the most amazing part is when you look, go back in time, okay, when you go back a year from now, two years from now, five years from now, and really think about what happened during the corona pandemic, and you'll turn around and say scoreboard wise, okay, it was absolutely uh, one of the craziest and most historic times uh, that we have seen. And oh, by the way, there's been some pretty good trading uh, as well. Today was a little odd though. Okay. Uh, today was one of those days you really needed to work for value. I think that's the best way of saying it. Like everything that I liked last night, if you, you know, for all you guys who received the, the emails and all that good stuff, I like things, but I like things a lot lower prices. For example, I loved Apple uh, yesterday. We started talking about it over this five day supply, but I liked it $5 below the gap. Uh, Alibaba, which I really, really liked yesterday, right on the video, I really liked it at the 205 area. Well, it gapped up to, you know, gapped up six, seven dollars higher. And we started noticing that over and over and over again. Tesla, which I really, really loved, right? Going into today's session, all it needed to do is clear the five day, gapped up 25 points above. So we had, a, a, you know, we, we really had a dilemma on our hands. Say to yourselves, well, are we going to try to play catch up on these names and really try to dig for higher prices or are we going to wait for value and the one thing that we kept on talking about last week was how a lot of the names that had really really big runs i started watching them stall out so we talked about these names last week right we talked about you know too low possibly stalling out we talked about bynd and i think i mentioned all these names uh in in uh in in the weekend's uh, weekend video so i'm i'm, I'm pretty Pretty sure a lot of you guys is not all new information, but we started looking at these names, right? Names that had really, really big runs starting to possibly roll over. And in the most ironic part about today, uh, the majority of the value today was to the downside. I, I know it sounds incredibly stupid to say, but that was the truth. The only uh, pivots to the upside were Amazon uh, and Netflix. And Netflix, which I was in three times today, both of them got 
uh, both of them were, were read uh, uh, pre-market because, again, the theory was, and this is, again, I don't know who, how people start with these theories or start with these, these random brain farts and they run with it, but it kind of played out to, to, to our favor uh, this morning. So apparently it's bad for Netflix, for Amazon, right, um, to, to, be, to be in a market that's going higher, that's about to reopen. And with that stupid theory, people sold off. A Amazon was down like seven, eight dollars pre-market. Netflix was down five, six dollars pre-market. And I tweeted out, I go, I don't get it. it must be the, the new math. Since when did Amazon, right? And when did Netflix rely on the COVID market, okay, to be successful? And, and I said, I go, at some point they're going, they're both going green. Uh, Amazon had a really, really big spike. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, Netflix, again, there was good dips opportunities in Netflix. Again, I was in this thing uh, three times, made it to green, not quite, but I think the theme was they really took down anything that prospered for from the stay at home movement. So if you look, for example, a Zoom big sell off today, uh, shop, right? Shop, again, big sell off today. Again, it, they, they, they were benefiting, quote unquote, uh, from the COVID market. You had Peloton, which again, I still don't understand the pure play on, on you know, again, I, I, how many people are buying $2,500, $3,000 bikes? Okay, it's a whole different story. 30 million people unemployed. But again, this was kind of grouped into the theory that the stocks that did really, really well in the run-up, right, on the COVID stay-at-home quarantine scenario, we're going to get sold off. Okay, I could run with that. So today was really a, a, a perfect example that, number one, the George Costanza market, right, works. Okay, 1 plus 1 equals 96. And number two, again, the scoreboard is going to be incredibly, uh, incredibly uh, flawed, okay, based on how strong a week the market is. So again, if you look at the names that had really, really big run-ups, again, the themes, right? You had restaurants, uh, McDonald's, big, big push, Chipotle, big, big push. And you could go through all the restaurants. Again, obviously, if they're going to open up, they're going to start doing really, really well. Uh, airlines today did very, very well as well. You know, you can see... Uh, Delta Airlines. You could go through the whole. Uh, you could go through the whole group. Delta, JetBlue, so forth and so on. Uh, Love had a big, big, strong move as well. Uh, the casinos did very, very well again on the possibilities of everything open up. So it's really not that hard if you think about it. There's only 30 stocks, and obviously uh, financials. Uh, financials obviously did incredibly well. So it doesn't really take a lot to light up the scoreboard um, for the Dow Jones stocks. Okay, think about it, there's only 30 of them. And if you have stocks, for example, that are, are going to benefit from any, obviously, things like flying, right? So Boeing makes planes. Again, look, let me look at monster, monster move on Boeing. They were actually coming uh, for the 140s, the 142s, the 145. Uh, weekly call uh, betters were stepping in. So you can see how aggressively it was taking up the stock. Um, so again, big, big move uh, for uh, the Dow Jones Industrial Average, actually all the indexes across the board. But again, un unless you were in these very, very specific groups, if you trade the names that are, well, just tradable on a day-to-day -day basis, you kind of had to work for your living. And the most amazing part was that's exactly what kind of day it was. Was there some opportunity today? Absolutely. Okay. There was definitely opportunity. Uh, I think one of the better... Uh, one of the better plays that we were thinking about uh, was kind of that, that that gap down, okay, on both Netflix uh, and Amazon. I said, you know, there's there's no way you can discount the business model from Amazon and Netflix on the whole, quote unquote, they're going to suffer because, the, you know, the, the opening of America is back. It's just, it doesn't make sense. And both of them obviously uh, went green because I know a lot of you guys uh, got long calls on the bottom of the range there. I, I literally was in... Uh, Netflix three times. It was so hard to trade. Um, you know, I was taking like a dollar here, 40 cents there. Uh, you know, it, it was just so hard to take because again, every single time there was literally an uptick in the market, right? They, they for some reason in the morning, they kept on pushing these things down. And until they kind of cleared up the sellers in these names, that's when they finally started moving up. And obviously, uh, you know, Amazon did really well. I love Amazon again for tomorrow. Uh, Netflix looks great, just needs to really bust out that channel. But the most important part is, again, it was a tale of two cities. And the most important thing as a trader, guys, stop 
getting blinded by the light of the scoreboard. Okay, the scoreboard is the scoreboard. It's a great conversational piece, water cooler piece. At the end of the day, it's all about individual process and how, again, your process is going to play out versus what the index is, what the scoreboard uh, is saying. So let's talk about it today, guys, right? So again, different day, just an absolute different day. Um, you know, we talked about Amazon on last night's video on the weekend update. Uh, I said I loved Amazon. I thought it looked great. Uh, 2420, huge spot, needs to reclaim. So Amazon finally went green. Uh, and there was a there was a pivot, a sneaky pivot. We, we didn't put it into the Twitter feed because we knew how important this 2420 level was. But there was a sneaky pivot uh, at 24, uh, I think it was 2409, 2411. Uh, and it burst, you know, I got long on the 2420 area. And again, it's really amazing. As strong as Amazon was, right? It felt like Amazon was up like 60 today. It wasn't. It was only up like, you know, it only traded up to, you know, 2430s. So it was a nice pop. You know, I think everybody did well on the trade, but I think it still needs more work ahead tomorrow to kind of confirm these prices. And I do believe uh, unless the market really, really comes back in, uh, you could see a move uh, into the 2460s level. So that was fine. There was no, it was a you know, nice trade. There was nothing wrong with that. Uh, Netflix, again, by the time that Netflix b started building 455, it just really lost all gas. Uh, it broke 455. 455 was yesterday's low, uh, excuse me, yesterday's high, which was Friday's high. It took that out and it went to uh, 456.30s. This is already my third entry, right? This is literally my third entry. My first one, I started scaling into uh, Netflix um, 448. And I added more 446. I usually don't do that, but I, I love that bottom of the range because I did believe it was going to go red to green. And I was up about two, two and change on the on the trade. I was like, all right, it's going to go. And it stalled out. So I wound up netting like nothing, like 40, 50 cents on the trade. Then watched it go all the way back, literally watched it all the way back to the lows of the day, like 443. And then I got long on the high of the day break at 553, went up like a dollar and change. Sold some, came back in, came all the way back in. And then the third trade, I got it on the second entry off this 455. Uh, it went to 456.30s. And again, it kind of just died out. But again, I liked overall uh, rotation of this name. Again, it's just one of those scenarios that, again, most of the beta names were not spotlighted for relative strength. Everything was in uh, banks, like I said, banks, airlines, restaurants, and anything to do with a possible um, macro reopening. So again, it is what it is there. And then you started seeing, uh, obviously, Roku. There was actually a small pivot to the upside uh, late in the day on Roku, but Roku now obviously never got to the downside. And here is again, I started lining these things up. These were, you know, these were the names that had big, big run ups. And just again, forget about even the fact of rotation out, just from the point of gravity. And uh, B Y and D, I put this into the channel. Uh, 3250, a uh, very aggressive area for the experienced traders only. Uh, it needs to get below 131 if it builds below, can flush. And Beyond was good. I mean, Beyond was really good. Congratulations, to all you guys who caught that. So here was the 32, right? Here's the 3250. Uh, here is the 131. And it went perfectly right to the 10-day moving average. I said there was a shot it could get to the 128.60s. It got to 128.80. So, again, I still like it. If this thing starts building below this channel here tomorrow, I think it goes lower. Um, too low, the same thing. 187 for experienced traders only. Remember, the stock is up 50, 60 percent. It's huge, huge, huge move. So I wrote, you know, 187 for experienced traders only, 183 and 180 will be the next big, big levels for a back test. So here was too low. Uh, here was too low as well, right? So here is the 187, right? 187, the 183. So both of them, right? 183 and 187 are being violated now. All it needs to do is lose this bottom range here, okay? And there's a shot, especially for all you guys who are trading on the option side. If this thing starts losing this bottom channel, and again, we talked about the five-day moving average, how important it is to short-term sentiment. If it confirms this channel, it could get all the way down to the 172 area. So uh, definitely something to watch for tomorrow. Uh, TTD never got back up to uh, the 310 area. Shop never got up to the 783 area. I actually like Shop again for tomorrow on the short side. Um, again, right? It held a 10-day support, just like a lot of these names did today. Uh, they got it kind of got rotated out. So you can see it here. Here's the low here. Here's the same low here. Uh, once it confirms the 10-day moving average tomorrow, again, this thing could have a move all the way down to the 680s. Again, if you believe in the theory, supply to supply, demand to demand. Well, here's demand. Well, here's the next demand. So uh, that's that on shop. Again, so you can see 
uh, you can see where the value was in a weird way. So Amazon obviously take on the way up from that 820, there's about a $13 move there, uh, straight up. And this is gonna look good on paper, okay? This is really gonna look on paper. So 814, if it builds below, can flush, right? Experience traders only. So Tesla gapped up, pretty much lost everything. Uh, there was rumors today that they were going to possibly be added to uh, the S&P 500. Okay, there's a big difference between being added to the S&P 500 and possibly being added to the S&P 500. So they sold it off. So here was the 14 level, right? So the stocks, uh, excuse me, here's the 14 level. So the stock starts selling off. But here's what I mean by it looks better on paper than it actually was the trade. If you, if for all you guys who traded Tesla today, you kind of know every single move went down like a dollar, dollar and a half, and then it spiked up dollar, dollar and a half, and it spiked up. So in a weird way today, although 814 was the pivot, right? And you could turn around and say, well, it did go down to 803, great call. No, 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 it just wasn't tradable, okay? If it wasn't tradable, for all you guys who did take that initial uh, 814 level to the downside, if you took cash flow, I said, take on the way down, you kind of know what I'm talking about. It went down like, you know, two, three dollars. That was a, kind of the biggest move in the whole rotation and then spiked again. So it was a very, very tough trade. Don't let, you know, again, don't let the scoreboard here look good. Like sometimes, you know, you see, you, you see, a, you know, you, you see a channel breaking down, but you don't realize how tight it was to, uh, to actually profit from a very, very tough trade. If you did take it, congratulations. I, I thought it was a very, very tough trade today. Uh, so yeah, so BYD take on the way down, uh, too low take on the way down. Uh, like I said, here, 128.70s, next support, it traded down to 128.80s, so really good job there. Uh, too low, everything on the lows. And here is kind of the end, end of the day, uh, end of the day spike to the upside. Uh, 118 needs to build for end of the day cash flow. Again, nobody was talking about a two, three dollar spike. This is just, just end of the day cash flow. Uh, here is Roku, right? So here is Roku. Here is the 18 right here. 18, 18, it traded right to supply. Uh, into the 1860s. Again, not a huge move, but again, the afternoon combined with a middle range band, you're not gonna get this majestic move. So uh, yeah, scoreboard looked great, right? Scoreboard looked great. Uh, there was some definitely value today uh, that we took advantage of, okay? Uh, again, I traded Netflix three times straight and I traded Amazon, but the most important part was, again, it really wasn't one of those, everything was going, everything was confirming. So again, days like this, you have to be more reserved, wait for your spots, and the moral of the story is take, keep on, again, keep on taking flow on the way up, because again, there is nothing uh, guaranteed. So tomorrow, again, you know, could we see uh, profit taken in the market? Again, 900 point move is pretty aggressive, okay? So we absolutely could, but again, there are names that I really like that, that, that you know, setting up uh, for tomorrow's session. Uh, I still think Amazon looks good. I think Alibaba looks good uh, on the upside to the downside. I'm still watching uh, BYND. I'm still watching Too Low. I'm still watching Shop. Uh, Chewy, even Chewy, even, uh, you know, again, name that they deemed that benefited from the COVID uh, stay-at-home movement, even Chewy, right? Even Chewy, uh, you know, starts losing this $40 level, uh, you can get a move lower. So again, never, never a dull moment in this thing we call the trading world. Guys, have a great night, everybody. God Congratulations bless. Congratulations for putting in the time to take control of your trading. You're one step closer to owning your future and achieving the success you desire. Want daily trade ideas directly from Dan, straight off his personal watch list? Unlock our free PS60 Vault, where you'll get nightly updates on pivot opportunities we're watching for the next day's session. Click the link in the description to get started today.